impacted being able to prepare for the Olympia? Has it been different being so in demand and making so many appearances? Absolutely. It definitely has been different. It does have an impact on your preparation. But I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm happy to be doing it. You look excited, Kai. <laughs> How excited should Kai Green be, Branch? Because you're one of the guys to beat on that Olympia stage. You said you will not stop until you're the last man standing on that Olympia stage, Branch. You've had your own adversity you've had to overcome, did it successfully, managed to not only win the Arnold, but defend your title when everybody said it would be impossible. The only thing left for you to accomplish in this business is winning the Olympia title. You know, it's a... Uh... After I got hurt last year, you know, I knocked out the Olympia. You know, no one is, uh, even my doctor said it's been at least a year before I could come back, and uh, you know, no one uh, thought I could do what I did. But you gotta believe in yourself, man. You gotta be a warrior. You know, things happen, you can't control life, and you can cry about it, and you can stand up and move forward. And uh, you know, I still can move forward, find a way to make it happen. And uh, you know, I've, I've accomplished every goal in this sport I've uh, set out to accomplish, except for one. And, uh, Hopefully, uh, I won't be the last man standing, but I'm sure Kai, and Victor, and Jay, if he decides to compete, will have something to say about that too. So, uh, you know, it's going to be probably the most competitive Mr. Rookie in history. Everybody shows up and uh, raise in shape, so uh, it'll be a good show. Well, Branch, uh, you, you've thrown your hand into the promoting ring. You've had your own competition now for a few years. Uh, very successful this last year. You've been kind enough to invite me out this year, and I'm very much looking forward to that. Over 400 competitors expected to be there. What's tougher, Branch? Getting ready for the Olympia or promoting your own show? I don't know, I think promoting the show is more stressful than getting ready for the Olympia. So, uh, dealing with all the bikini girls and men's physique <laughs> and bodybuilders that are depleted and it's a rough uh, rough deal these past few weeks. But, uh, you know, I relate to them, man, because I know how it is when you're close to a show. So, uh, but uh, very blessed that my show's grown exponentially every year for the past six years. And, uh, hopefully it will uh, we'll be blessed with another uh, outstanding show this year. All right, you've got a branch. All right, you've heard from each one of our panelists here today. I've got a hundred questions for them, but we want to give you, the audience, a chance to ask the champs anything that's on your mind. It's a, pretty much a no-holds-barred. These guys will pretty much answer anything you got, within reason, of course. Anybody got any pressing questions for the champs out there? Don't be shy. There's a lot of young bodybuilders that are really look up to you, and obviously all of you are great role models. I spoke to a few of you up there, and you've been great to talk to. Um, my question is, what advice would you have for, say, an 18 or 19 year old boy who is looking up to you and trying to become like you? Let's go to Arthur on that one. Uh, Arthur, an 18, 19 year old kid just starting out in the game wants to be a Jay Cutler or a Branch Warren or any of these guys up here. Uh, what advice would you give them? How do you start out from 18 to 19, your first show, to getting on the Olympia stage? That's really simple. You really need to focus on your nutrition, your training. Don't worry about all the silly other stuff that you hear in the media. The most important thing is to take care of your health, take care of your future so you have longevity. One of the biggest mistakes athletes make is they take a lot of injuries and make a lot of mistakes in their early time. Instead of taking the time to truly learn their trade. Bodybuilding is truly a trade. It's not something that merely happens. It's not a man at this stage who doesn't have a profound level of knowledge, close to a physiology level. I talked to every one of these guys. I do have the degrees to back it. They can keep up with me. What can I say? This is a fact. 18, 19 year olds, I don't care if you're 16, the same way. You really want to focus on nothing but your future a day at a time so you make progress based upon nutrition. Tip of that sweet. Well, one thing's for sure none of these guys started on the Olympia stage. We actually, all of us competed, some of us together, uh, as teenagers, and it's literally one step at a time. You know, you take it, you go from the teenage to the national level, obviously trying to get your pro card. Jay, you've done every step along the way. Uh, you know, Branch and I battled for a team national title. He beat me for the overall back in 93. Uh, I think the most thing, uh, important thing is to stay consistent. You know, a lot of teenagers, they start training in their teenage years and they fall out, you know, when they get in their early 20s. But you just need to stay with it, stay with the nutrition, stay with the training, but, you know, build a lifestyle around it. You know, make sure you do the, the training and all the dieting, but have a life also. That way you don't get burnt out and you can be successful at it. Another question, Kevin. Yes, sir. 
thank you guys for coming. My question is about the relationship. How close are you guys off stage? Do you guys work out together? Do you talk about nutrition together? Do you do, um, I know you have fierce comp competition on the stage, but do you guys get together on the um, off stage? All right, the, the question is, uh, Victor, we'll go to you on this one. Are you guys friends off the stage as well as on the stage? I mean, everybody seems pretty friendly. We're all in the same business. We all travel a lot uh, and go to a lot of appearances, but uh, do the IFBB pros get along off the stage? I'd say we, we for the most part, we, we all get along. You know, there's very few guys, you know, they just become competitive no matter where you're at, you know, you could be uh, in the gym, you know, you still want to train harder than that guy. Uh, you could be hanging out and for some reason they just want to size you up and say, I'm going to kick your ass in the next show. But for the most part, we, um, we get along, I mean, we, we talk to each other, we, most of us have each other's phone numbers. So we, um, you know, with Kai, I mean, I've been knowing Kai for, for man, uh, over 15 years. Oh, we used to work out in the same gym years back, and uh, you know we, we are, and we still we're still Can friends. And um, you know, friends, you know, you know, Jay, I can call Jay anytime if, uh, if I need a job or something. Jay will hook it up, you know. <laughs> it's uh, I, I say for the most part we are. You know, I mean, um, we've seen in the past um, guys who start quarreling over something or who said about what, you know. He wasn't supposed to win the show again. That, that gets a little hyped up. It, it's fun, you know, it does happen. You know, just like wrestling, you know, guys want to keep interesting. We, we're trying to make it fun too at the same time, but for the most part, we do get along and uh, it's a grown man's sport. Like one big happy family. The guys are, are very close actually. They're always willing to help each other out, give advice. Matter of fact, Branch, I'm sure you probably have some advice for Kai as he prepares for the Olympia. Uh, what advice would you give Kai in his preparations? Eat lots of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> lots of water on Friday night. Hi, I think he's giving you the wrong advices. I'm pretty sure. But, uh, yeah, you know what, everybody, like I say, we all travel to a lot of different shows. We've all been, uh, you know, to, to Europe together and a lot of the competitions, guest posing, uh, and that type of thing. So it's nice to see, but there's a lot of camaraderie in the IFBB, and a lot of the guys are very good friends. All right, questions for the champs. Kevin. What are your feelings on cards while for a free contest? I didn't hear him. What is your opinion on carving before a contest? Carving before a contest. Uh, anybody want to take that one? I'll take first shot. To carve or not to carve, that's a question, of course. Some people fat load, some people carb load. It all depends on your physiology. Everybody's got a little bit different structure. What you've been doing throughout the year, what your carb intake has been, what your fat intake has been. This is where your deciding factors are. Some people metabolize fast better than others. Some people metabolize carbohydrates. So carbohydrate loading, like post-carb use or post-fat use, bad idea, you're guessing. Post-carbohydrate loading during low carb or high carbs works very, very well. That's simple. Jay, let me ask you, has, has carb loading before a competition helped or hurt more people over the years? I've done both. Uh, I've actually, in the last few years, I kind of eat in moderation. I, I actually back down a little bit on the carbohydrates because I just found it, you know, when you eat more carbohydrates, you tend to re retain water. So for me, uh, I, you know, my body's pretty carb sensitive, closer to a contest, so I like to cut back some um, and just eat pretty much how I ate all the way through the competition. Sometimes changing things drastically uh, becomes, you know, detrimental to what your condition is. Yeah, the, big, the biggest changes uh, sometimes for competition can elicit the biggest responses, most of the time, not what you're looking for. <laughs> okay, we got another one. Hi, uh, question for you. How do you guys feel about uh, Phil Heath winning last year and how do you guys plan to beat him this year? Let me start with Jay. Uh, how did you feel about Phil winning last year, Jay? Uh, I was happy for Phil, but I was pissed off because I lost. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he's the champ now. And, of course, every single one of us should answer this question. We're going to win. And, um, 
if if someone asked me, well, who's going to win the Olympia this year? I would say myself. I hope these guys would say the same. And um, you know, he's a great champion, a good friend of mine, of course. But you know, he, he's not going to win the title forever. So one one of us is going to beat him again. So the question is, is can one of those guys be Kai Green? Kai, you'll be facing Phil, obviously, along with a few of the other guys up on stage here this year. My question to you, Kai, is this. Can you beat Phil in his own game, or do you have to bring something different to the table to take him out? Wow, great question. Um, honestly, my goal is not to beat Phil Heath in his own game. My goal is to come in and run a very strong program. Um, I believe in the efforts of my coach. I believe in my ability to stay focused and work very hard. And I'm also a very good prayer. And I think I got a very good relationship with the man upstairs. So, those things being said, whether we choose to carve load or not, um, I just think that um, every man is willing to work very hard and to see his dream realized. If it is truly his dream, he should have an opportunity to see it happen. So, I'm just going to work real hard. I'm going to pray a little bit hard. And uh, maybe I will see my dream realized. Kai, any uh, truth to the rumor that you said you could beat Phil Heath standing on your head? It's very possible. Very possible. I've never seen him stand on his head, so I don't know how well he would do that. But I think I'm pretty good at that, so. Okay. You know, Kai, it is possible. Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Okay, Bob, I think we've got a question for Kai, so if you just keep the mic for a second. Guys, once again, thanks for coming. Bob, we go way back to the Kentucky Fried Chicken days. <laughs> this is for Yes, Kai. we do. Kai, <laughs> you did an article in Muscular Development where you actually wrote about a gentleman that was killed training at a gym that you train at. I want to thank you for that article. I'm a counselor at a jail for kids. I actually use that article for some of the knuckleheads that I have to deal with on a daily basis. But it was good. And I know a lot of you guys put a lot out there outside of bodybuilding. I want to thank you for that. Kai, we did use an article that you had put in Muscular Development. Cut it out, read it, and we discussed it. I have groups on that probably once every two months or so. So I just want to thank you guys for everything you do outside of bodybuilding. Thanks, guys. All right, thank you. Okay, Bob, we've got another one right here. Stand up. Hey guys, uh, basic training philosophy question for each one of the pros. High volume or high intensity? Meaning heavy weight. Uh, I believe it was training philosophy? Yes, training philosophy, high volume versus high training, uh, referring to heavy weight. Uh, natural question for Branch Moore, talking about training philosophy, Branch. Uh, heavy weight versus high reps versus high velocity. You just seem to go at it with chains around your neck and all kinds of craziness in the gym. Any rhyme or reason? Yeah, there's rhyme or reason to it. Uh, you know, it's uh, the way I train up just heavy weight and high intensity. And um, I push it till I can't push it no more. You know, for me, if I have enough rep in me and I stop before I go to failure, I cheated myself. So that's the way I train. And I don't give a damn what anybody thinks. That's how I like doing it. And that's how I'm going to keep doing it. Got me this far, and I'm gonna keep on doing it that way. Victor, uh, let me ask you: uh, Has there been any change in your training philosophy? Obviously, now in your comeback trail to the Olympia, anything that you've uh, picked up over the years, or you just did you just go right back to your old training style? I actually uh, do both: uh, high intensity, high volume. And that's what I always done. That's what I always liked, and that's what my body responds to. And uh, right now, I'm starting again, getting ready for this Olympia. It's, it's Adapting back to when I started, again, keeping it, you know, simple, you know, same workouts, deadlifts, uh, bench press, and again, still uh, high intensity and uh, high volume. I don't, that's something I don't change. Everything else is basically optional. You know, I do that weekly, uh, you know, supersets, or drop sets, everything else. But definitely with the high intensity, I never, there's no light thing, you know, it's, people always ask me, when's your light thing? This, you know, the light, there's a light time, right, for a warm-up, that's about it, but um, there are no light days, it's just high intensity, and every time you step into the gym and you work out, 
that's ultimately what's going to get your body and your physique to where you need to be. Alright, no light days for victors, heavy days and heavier days. Hello? There we go. Alright, I got a question for Branch real quick. Uh, I saw the demo for the potential reality TV show. I wanted to see if there's any progress on that. And then uh, for everybody, if they could, they have a second. Uh, Non-training, obviously. Biggest cheat meal. Um, well, cheat meals, once I start my diet for the Olympia, I never cheat. That's, uh, we just don't do it that way. So, uh, and as far as the reality show, uh, right now it's being looked at by uh, Discovery Channel in the UK. So, uh, I don't know. We'll see it. I believe it when it, I believe it when it happens. So, uh, you know, maybe it will, maybe it won't. So, uh, if uh, we, we made a, you know, we filmed a little pilot and it's, uh, it came out really well. So, you know, we're hoping that, uh, you know, somebody will pick it up and get a chance to air it. All right, time for just a few more questions. The microphones are biting the dust. We can get a relay system going out here. Cheat meal, it's kind of a modern uh, term. It's nothing we all grew up with, I know that. Like back in my day when I started, boy, you, you dieted for 14 Hello? weeks and, uh, and that was the end of that. Okay, the question was, gentleman right here is going into his first show in the Brooklyn area. And I guess he wanted to know what motivation, what can help motivate him going into that show? What does he need to do, guys, to keep himself up and running going into that first show? Steroids. Um, anybody who wants to take it? Victor, uh, nice should you need any motivation going into your first show? Um, motivation should be uh, definitely just watching the guys compete awesome. tonight. Don't get arrested. You know, seeing uh, <laughs> you know, bodybuilding magazines, seeing you know, what the guys that competing amateurs, where they got to so far, or where they at at the moment, but definitely uh, watching shows is definitely a good way to motivate. There weren't as many shows as there are now when I started, so to actually motivate myself, um, I would just look back and you know, find any old magazines and just see, you know, look at Arnold or watch Pumpy Iron and just kind of visualize yourself already stepping up that stage and, and looking at old shows, you can learn a lot from going back looking at, you know, like right now you have YouTube, you can see training videos, and that alone will motivate you, and just seeing the final, and envisioning yourself, and seeing the final, the finished product of what you're going to bring, and just look at seeing, you for seeing yourself ready, again, that, that should be enough to motivate yourself, and once you do it, that, that can, you can go back to that for later show. Jay, uh, let me ask you real quick, we talk about motivation, we talk about whether you would uh, go back on the Olympia stage. You've won four Olympias, three Arnolds, Night of the Champions, Ironman, every other show on the circuit. Is there any motivation at this point to go back on the Olympia stage? Yeah, of course. I mean, I, I'll be honest, like, you know, being a competitor, I mean, if I was, if I had the access to what I had, you know, early in my career, I mean, we have musculardevelopment.com, which, of course, a lot of us are contracted by, it, not, I think all of us, or most of us. Are, but, uh, you know, you can get on there nowadays, see the routines, all the guys, but I've looked at routines of every single one of these guys, even when I was finishing ahead, I looked at routines to see what this guy does for certain body parts or that. I mean, training videos, we all have training videos out there. Uh, we attend shows ourselves. I mean, I'm still a fan of bodybuilding. I mean, come, attending these shows is the best thing you can do, but am I motivated? Yeah, I'm motivated to get back up there, for sure. All right, it's time for two more questions. Kevin? All right, young lady here has a question. She was kind of shy about coming up here, but we forced her. Thanks. I was just curious, um, how often and for how long do you practice posing? Ah, Ty Green. Good question. Perfect question. How often do you practice posing routines? It's a number I can't give out. Wow! <laughs> Um, I, honestly, this? I have a whole philosophy. personal philosophy about that. When I'm training in the gym, doing my training, I believe that the difference 
when I'm in the gym training and being on stage posing is probably the conscious thoughts in my mind. But a true, you know, a training session, I believe, is still an opportunity to tense and relax muscles. And I am using resistance and the contractions muscle against resistance so the repetitive muscles grow. But when I'm on stage, I am using muscle contractions to display muscle and a physique. The difference is, one, in the gym, and I'm contracting this resistance, versus being on stage and contracting Jeff, you need a new phone. Contracting, I, contracting isometrically. Anyway, the point I'm just trying to make is, is that when I'm in a gym training or when I'm on stage posing, it's always an opportunity to learn how to make deeper mind and muscle connections, to gain control and mastery of my machine. Um, so your posing practice versus your training in a gym should still be approached with the same thoughts in mind. That said, uh, do you actually practice your routines? <laughs> yes. Thank you, Kai. <laughs> All right, last question. Well, one more question, gentlemen, from this gentleman right here. Yes, my uh, question is directed towards Jim. And uh, I read articles about him and are you ready to go with him? Oh, shit. Okay. How's that going? I didn't hear any. You gotta speak up. Okay. So my direct, my question is directed towards Jay, and I was asking about uh, his movie he has going, Hercules, I believe. Or yeah, we uh, we had budget issues with that with that film, and you know they're still telling me they're still working on trying to you know get the financing for it, but as of now it's on hold. All right, budget issues. Branch, would you uh, finance Jay's Hercules movie? If you win the Olympia this year, you're going to finance my movie. <laughs> You'll finance my new company. <laughs> <laughs> All right, like I said, a tight-knit group, folks. Everybody's buying stuff for everybody. Dinner on Jay tonight. I want to thank you for our live TV superstars here today. Jay Cutler, Arthur L. Maria, Victor Martinez, Branch Warren, and of course, Ty Green. We want to thank, uh, you know, Ned and Betty, of course, their staff, Europa, Everyone for bringing us out for these seminars. This is my second one I've attended. And, uh, we appreciate all the fan response and of course the interest of coming here. And I speak for these guys. You know, without you guys, we couldn't do this uh, and, and be who we are. So we thank you very much. All right, everybody, and Scott up on stage now. We'll get a couple pictures of the paparazzi out there.